Warning, the following contains material that may be too disturbing to some people. Descriptions of violence, mature situations, and adult themes. This is intended for mature audiences. Your discretion is advised. So, uh, let's talk about a couple things. I know you guys kind of want me to go over some of this stuff that we've got in the Discord. So, uh, I'll start out with, like, religion in the world uh, section here. So, the I, the premise for uh, this campaign was meant to be based on, like, the Arcana uh, I saw it used somewhere else before, and I thought it was a really cool idea for like a pantheon. Um, and so we wanted to base it on that. So the, basically, the religion in the world far, follows the whole idea of the major arcana from tarot, which is uh, like uh, an arch. Um, basically, it's supposed to represent the journey of the fool, which is one of the first cards in the arcana from ignorance uh, to enlightenment, which is represented by the world. So these are like, it's like a journey, and the arcana represents stations uh, on that journey. And the end result, the end goal of that journey is enlightenment. Um, so each arcana represents a different like stage um, in getting from ignorance to enlightenment. And in the world this is represented through like reincarnation. Like some people die in order to pre proceed on to the next stage. Um, and uh, you know, but also you can not die. You can just turn the page and uh, move on to the next stage by like switching what arcana your your person is focused on in the world as well. Um, typically, like people in the world, clerics will serve one arcana. Monks, clerics will serve one arcana for the majority of their lives. They can also change too, but it's much more climactic, right? Like if a cleric's getting all their magic from I don't know, the fool, and they suddenly change to another arcana, they're going to have to be able to get that magic from the new arcana, right? So if they forsake their patron, they will lose, lose that magic granted to them um, as a thing, um, which is probably why most of them stay with one arcana throughout the course of their lives. Um, but they do represent, like, guides, cler monks, clerics, priests. They're, like, they're considered guides for that part of a person's life. Um, so, uh, if you're in, if you're in a part of your journey on the, the great wheel, uh, and you're in like the tower, for example, so the shadow of the tower is upon you, um, guidance is gonna, you're gonna need guidance from a monk or cleric of the tower, presumably. Um, let's see. That's more of an opinion, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, but that's kind of the idea. Um now uh let's talk about I have a quick question um oh. about monks cuz you said that they're they're different than what 5e monks would be which is part of the reason why I haven't chosen to make a monk cuz I don't um I I guess I don't know enough about them Well if you're playing a monk um, you can make your monk however you want to make your monk This is just kind of like uh, this is just kind of like a general layout for how I think of things, really. Yeah, um, but how, because um, monks usually draw powers from within, how would you say monks in your world draw their power? Is it from the arcana like a a cleric would be, or is it still from within? Uh, it's still from within. Um, it depends, right? Like, we've seen some monks... I would say for the most part for like a player monk character or like just a general NPC monk we see in the world from within. Uh, the tip, when I think of like a typical monk's life in the world uh, that we're playing in, I think of someone who goes to like a monk, uh, a monastery um, that's probably sworn to one particular arcana uh, and they, they go through monk training, I guess, if you will. So they're, they're learning under that all the ideals of that particular arcana. So um, they're okay. also like mastering their chi. They're, you know, maybe making vows of silence or giving up their name or like the tower yeah. and specifically is going to be a lot of things like sacrifices being made. So they're, of course, they're going to be like typically be giving up their name or their property or. Um, yeah. So yeah. they're. It does. 
a lot like like real world monks and less like what uh D D monks have turned into kind of yeah well it looks like there isn't i mean there's an example of a, a more D D monk in like fiwa and the other the yeah. people yeah yeah they are not they don't they don't worship any arcana that they, they, they revealed yeah <laughs> Um, they, they kind of, uh, they, it's almost worship is a very strong word for the relationship with the master, but like assuming they, they wrote the stuff on reverence. This, yeah. Reverence is the best way to put it. Kind of like the Dalai Lama yeah. or something, um, mm -hmm. uh, or the Buddha or something like that. Like a lot, some Buddhists do consider Buddha like a deity, but a lot of Buddhists consider Buddha like just a really wise man who, um, right. had, who had a lot of respect really, and yeah. Exactly. A lot of respect. Had a lot they of they respect. take into consideration how maybe the Buddha would handle a situation, but it's not, not technically worship. Right. Um, yeah. But it's just, it's just like somebody who found a really great way to live your life. And so you try to try to emulate that. Um, or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think monks like, if monks changed arcana, it wouldn't be as devastating as it would be to like a cleric, you know, mm -hmm. um, because the, the clerics essentially become powerless <laughs> when they, you know, when they lose. A favor yeah. In arcana. Yeah. Um, whereas and warlocks. I guess that was yeah. part of, <laughs> yeah, I guess that was part of what was confusing me is like, if I, if I had made a monk and, um, then. Um, yeah, I would say like if you wanted to play a monk, I, first of all, I think that'd be awesome if somebody played a monk. Um, Rich play a monk. Yeah, Maybe I mean, Kishama? I guess. Yeah, Kashana. Yeah, I guess we've had some people that are doing like some. Alduin was a monk. Alduin, Kashana, Sha. Yeah. I didn't last yeah, long. Though. I guess Alduin was a monk. Yeah. Alduin is was. a monk still. I guess he's. Like... <laughs> yeah, he's still alive. Um, <laughs> I just it was so hard to do everything not do really a talking. I guess I'm. Yeah. 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 Was it was too much multi class? Was he like a multi class? No, he was just straight monk. He was straight monk. He was your first straight up no multi class. I, I didn't I multi class him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, him that's, and he was that's just true. a warlock. Yeah. He just that's did true. kind of clericy things. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he was a. Celestial Warlock, yeah. I, I just I just love that the first thing that we saw Elduin do was try to pull off some cool monk shit and, like, fall in the water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, like, I, just, almost I pretty much rolled one every time I tried to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, he hit Odin. Uh, instead of trying to save him, he just, like, attacked him. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, well, this, this is kind of done well. for. <laughs> 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 now, like, some of the... You'll always be hated. Also, Melora is technically kind of a monk, um, but she's also got like some yeah. magic and stuff. Um, I guess some monks have magic. There's like uh, oddly powers, but uh, yeah. we've also seen like a lot of NPC monks. So like Lapel was kind of a monk. Nurnum. We of... ran into some early on, like before we met Ishu and them when we were resting in the forest. We saw two wandering monks. Oh that yeah, I think uh, Timothy actually interacted yeah. with. Yeah, that was part I of my song. So that remember. was right before. <laughs> that was right before you. That was right yeah. before we met up with the hag. Yeah. Great segue. I, How long did actually, you work on the lyrics of that song? Yeah. Uh. Maybe like two days. Dang. Yes. Yeah, because that was a long I don't time ago. Heard you sing or like perform no, since no have... Christmases ago. Oh, we haven't. No, yeah, we haven't oh. heard it's you. Supposed... We haven't heard you since we started streaming. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Yeah. Your, I remember but, your your Grinch parody. Yeah, <laughs> that was the, the Grinch was the first one, and then this was the second one, and then I just redid it. This is the same song. Is I it, okay. okay. This song well, um, nice. That's why I was able to pull it off on the fly. Because <laughs> I, I actually had the like, lyrics. Wait, let me pull this up. Yeah, I had the lyrics already saved. Nice. nice. Well, it was awesome. Um, crazy. Speaking, of, speaking yeah. of, can I get experience for that or no? <laughs> uh, I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, <laughs> yeah, take an, extra, take an extra three XP for that. You deserve it. Also, like, I awarded XP during the break just in case anybody missed it. Like, yeah, I, I copied that into Discord. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think we all saw. 
Okay. Um, just making sure. Uh, yeah. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your uh, talking about the arcanas and the lore and stuff. No, you're good. Um, all I was gonna say is that uh, some of the some of the monks like Lapel and Nurnam and Rifa, they're called these uh, Bodhisattvas. Um, these guys are uh, like a special kind of monk, and for them, it is a lot more tied to their arcana. I mean, they they're literally chained to it. Um, but that's a different thing. Uh, that's a different thing. Um, uh, oh yeah, I was another. Gonna, what's oh? Go ahead. Go ahead. You got a question? Uh, it's not really related to anything we're talking about yet. So if if you have something related, lead with that. No, I was thinking about moving on to the next topic, actually. Oh okay. <laughs> uh, I was just going to ask, since how this recently happened, uh, is there any overlap between? Uh, the Arcana and the Archfey. Well, we got a hint at that today, right? Yeah, I think maybe he was lying. <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'll say this: he was telling the truth about that, right? Like, think, think back. So he, is, he is not the fool. No, he's not the fool. The Arcana. He's the prince of fools. Okay. Um, what he was saying is like, I could have been the fool, but I didn't want it because I wanted to. I wanted to stay alive. You didn't want to die. Um, and send, I assume, yeah. And, yeah, because, yeah, like, he called it, he says the same thing as dying, and, like, cease, cease to be or whatever. You be you become something else when you become an Arcana. So there's, like, this hint of, like, being able to mm -hmm. become an Arcana, and, like, they were chosen. So, like, that, that seems like that was the kind of thing, like, like, he could have been, they wanted one that was the fool, right? It kind of seems, is insinuated there. And he could have fit that role, but he chose not to. And he also said that the other Archfey made similar decisions. Um, think back to like when we first introduced Orlin. Or no. Um, when Orlin went back. I mean, it's not long after we introduced her. When she went back to the, right. uh, the Feywild. This is before we were on stream, I think. Um, yeah. And uh, those, those guys in the blue suit showed up. And they took the blue mech suits that they, they looked like elves showed up. And they, they convinced Orland to kind of go with them. They wanted her blood for something. Um, and they basically like used her to get back to the Feywild. <clears throat> I'm still worried about that. And then <laughs> I think I have it figured out. And then uh <laughs> and then uh as soon as you got there, it was under attack by mind flayers, right? That's when we first saw the Feywild was being destroyed by these mind flayers. And they had this giant golden pyramid in the sky that was spinning around. Um, and it was like it fired a laser beam at the great tree, which is like Oberon's like uh, palace castle. I mean, it's yeah. We have it described as a palace in my notes. Yeah, yeah, and basically destroyed it. Base. And, and like <laughs> you saw all the people of the Feywild being rounded up and put in chains by these mind flayers, and they weren't wearing like they weren't really disguising themselves uh, then. They weren't like all wearing mech suits. Yeah, they had their their brains on legs. Yeah, too. Yeah, they're intellect devourer guys that you saw in uh, yeah. later on that you guys fought. Orland just calls them brains on legs. Um, I think I actually have a sample of one of those. <laughs> yeah, but, you do. But what yeah. I was what I was getting at was uh, when they when you you finally they you finally got to Oberon, um, they uh, he gave you that orb, <clears throat> and um, before he was like basically like dragged off by these guys. They said he was being uh, essentially arrested, if I recall, for desertion. I remember saying uh, charged with desertion, and I remember Wolf being like, oh, man, that's interesting. I remember that being a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, the, yeah, and now with if you combine that with what uh, Hearsom here was saying, it's like it's another piece to that puzzle, you know? Um, like maybe They over serve the Arcana. Or like they were supposed to be Arcana. And they left. Um, or yeah. No, no, no. I mean the the, no, liars. the, the elves. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah the, the blue well, guys. The, fake elves. the blue blue du blue dudes. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. So potentially, like they serve the Arcana, or they serve Heaven, or they serve whatever it was that was around at that time when the Arcana were created. Um. Uh. Yeah. 
Which is uh, a reveal itself. The Arcana are created. They're not just eternal things. Uh, they were created. Now, whether they're supposed to be eternal things is something we don't yet know. But they've been around for 10,000 years or so. Um, we know that much. And we, we have also, we've also been hinted uh, at the idea that, uh, uh, that the, uh, the liars had their own gods on, on the world before the Arcana. There's been like such the situation. Oh, that's what that. I forgot to ask that guy. Yeah. I asked him if they, if they worshipped anyone. I forgot to ask him if the liars worship anyone. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. So, but uh, there's a whole lot of things going on there. So, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Uh, we've also talked about, like, the primordials, and basically primordials are, like, god-level things that came before the Arcana, essentially. So, like, Archfey can be considered primordials. Um, the Forgotten One would be considered primordial hell. The flesh itself, it would be considered a primordial. Uh, primordial fire, primordial water with beings like Melora. Um, these are all just, like, really powerful things that aren't quite mortal uh, that have been around uh, since before the Arcana. That's why they're called primordials. Forgotten One. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're separate from heaven, but we have also, like, given the hints that, like, some of the, uh, at least some, maybe all of the Arcana were primordials at some point. It's also been said, too, I think. Um, and then... So, probably safe to say all Arcana are primordials, but not all primordials are Arcana? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great way to put it. I think we have that written down somewhere. Um, but yeah, that's a very good way to put it. Kind of like rows and, and or the crows and ravens, right? Like, I think it's, I think it's like all raven, crows are ravens, but not all ravens are crows or something like. I don't remember how it goes. Um, something along those lines. Uh, but yes, um, and we've also talked about like there being like a civil war between uh, primordials. So maybe after the Arcana had ascended, they they had a bunch of primordials that were like rebelling. They had to put them all down. Um, and we've talked about how that includes fire being shattered into all these different aspects um, because fire was like one of the most rebellious. Um, I think in B team stars was mentioned as one that might be like broken in some way as well. Wasn't it? Um, Broken. Broken or lost or like it uh, different from the others in some way. I remember something. Well, we had that. We had that little video that I put together for the star talking to uh, Ambien, right? Um, or because oh, I guess he did talk to him. Yeah, Ambien had that orb for the star, so there's like a s insinuation that it's maybe it's in some kind of similar state as like Oberon right now, right? Um, because yeah, maybe like that's a, what I'm thinking of. There's like an orb that's out there, and Ambien has it, and it's communicated to Ambien through that orb. So, and also like you found the orb just. In a dungeon, <laughs> so, like it had been sitting there for God knows how long, thousands of years. Yeah, probably. it was like sealed away. Yeah, yeah. Probably um, for protection, similar to like Oberon's is in uh, Odain, and and Melora's was in Oberon. Probably it thought like, hey, I should put this somewhere safe, but I don't trust anybody. Maybe protection. Maybe it was to keep it away. Well, I don't think we know. We may never get an answer to that question. No. Um, what I will say is that, like, that, it, I think it's fair to say that that orb being brought out into the world so far means that there's, like, a little more hope in the world, it seems like. It's a okay. thing. Um, definitely it's something, a great question. Definitely something the world Sorry, needs. Sorry, go on. Go ahead. Question. I was going to say, uh, I, I think we've talked about this, but maybe we haven't ever nailed down the details. How far ahead is B team of A team? Uh, time timeline wise. Um, okay. I think we settled on two to three weeks. If Behind. I can't remember now. Two to three. <laughs> it was like a two to three week difference. Um, if I recall. Uh, they, so have they, have behind. they even hit? Watt and Tam yet? Uh, wait. 
the uh, B team. Um, yeah. The, the B team. B team's on their way to creation, right? Yeah, they're on their way to the big city. Um, he, the thing with B team is we saw them last time we, we were playing through the through with them in Namvan Kosatan. We saw the moment that the flesh bloom appeared, which is right around the same time um, that you guys all teleported out of uh, Lapel's camp, right when he like. Oh, okay. So they're behind. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah. the opposite. So, so they're like two to three. So weeks we got to behind. five rings after them. Yeah. Right. Yep. Interesting. Okay. And if I recall, A team saw bounties for B team. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whereas when B team was there, there was no bounties in the city yet. Right. Well, yet. But by the, that... by the time we got through. <laughs> <laughs> By the time we got through, very the... much so. Yeah, yeah. It is a little funny though. We got our wait. There's a bounty for Kashama still. Uh, well, I mean, te oh, yeah. technically, <laughs> technically, technically, Kashama, Kashama's bounty was paid, but the guy died. Yeah, right. After, <laughs> right yeah, after so he that. couldn't yeah. take it off. Yeah, that's why it's funny. They're still <laughs> looking for a a, t a turtle, and yep. they're never gonna find it. <laughs> Not my fault. Yeah, and... I thought he had more HP. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> I mean his, his shell is still out and about yeah, his, somewhere. His shell is inside one of the. Was that a bed and breakfast we ended up at? Yeah, it's in, it was in one of the rooms when we left it, <laughs> abandoned yeah. it finally, after all the work we got to get it over the wall and. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, but that I think that means if. If I'm understanding this correctly, the attack where we fought the bro uh, the beacon of the copper herald of flesh, the the dragon like thing, the dragonfly like thing, uh, that was revealed as to be a sort of like a decoy attack or a like a side attack. But the main attack was heading towards creation. Does does that mean that B team was in creation when the attack happened? Uh, so okay. B, B team, we'll find out. we don't know, right? We know B team yeah. was headed towards creation around two to three weeks before this attack would take place. So presumably, right, creation. We don't know how long it would take? But pre presumably, for A team, creation is being attacked like right now. Presumably, right? Or it's like yeah, about we left to happen. the very next night or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like we don't know. We still haven't gotten news from what's going on in creation. Um, I'm not sure any of A team really cares. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Vash probably doesn't at the very least. I don't well, know. Like, there's yeah. some there's some generally good people still on A team for the time being. Um, Odain. I mean, Orlin probably doesn't just care. Just Odain. <laughs> yeah, Ishu Ishu wouldn't care. He's never even heard of creation. Um, Ishu cares about the ones that are in front of him. He's not like a care about everybody type. I don't think. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's not like if someone's suffering right in front of him, then he cares. But otherwise, like I, I think I brought this up before. Orlin used to care about everything, but as time's gone on, I think she's gone from um, chaotic good to more chaotic neutral. She only cares about things that she cares about. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I mean, to be honest, it makes sense because like whole. Everyone you've ever known might be dead right now, for the most yeah. part. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's that. Uh, yeah, so I think Odane is the only one who's, who is really good thinking of all of that right now. Yeah. Now, like, Serafina or Fee would, would definitely care about an attack on creation, because that's like... She's not here anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because well, like creation would be like uh, you'd be like heaven's foothold on earth, right? So like, yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, isn't Seraphina still technically alive in heaven somewhere? Yeah, Seraphina is Serafina's not Fee. Yeah, Seraphina. <laughs> well, yeah, we don't know. I mean, we saw Seraphina turn it to a gold, or maybe that was Fee, or we don't really know, right? We know that Serafina, oh, yeah. Serafina was in Fee's body, took over Fee's body after. I, I thought Serafina I think that's the consensus we reached, though, Fee is that. Yeah. Hmm? 
One I thought uh, Serafina told us that Fee was dead. Like, definitely dead. I think she did, yeah. Sounds right. So I, I, I guess this was a discussion we had off stream, but I, I think we all sort of assume that Serafina's soul couldn't return to Fee's body, and that's why. Hmm. After it was sucked out. I mean, if that's what you want to go with, then. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But it's, I, don't, I don't think we're going to see the answer on that for some time. That, that that plot line has a lot more development left in it, and it might mm. might depend. Like we could get some answer. I don't know. We could see some stuff with that based on somebody who's a statue right now. Um, if that person ever comes back, we will see. Oh, Orlin is going to find a way. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> one, of the, you one of the things she cares about down. right now. You're trying. Like, I actually checked to see if Hearsome had the ability to do it, and he doesn't. <laughs> like, I was actually like, if he can do it, I'll, you know, I'll check and see if he can. He legitimately doesn't have the ability to do it. So Wait, wait, wait. Well, there, there's a stone to flesh spell. Is there a gold to flesh spell? <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. Like, I I don't know. I don't think there is a gold of flesh spell. I'll say that. But I don't know if it would, uh, if it would fix the problem there, if there was, you know, like. I think if it, I think if, if we did that, it would just be a dead corpse still. Right. I think so too. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's my suspicion. Um, but yeah. We are, we are meeting some more Archfey, so maybe they can do it. That's if you have some cat. There are some Arch. I have a feeling. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What do you got a feeling about? I, as a DM, I have a feeling that uh, any Archfey's slash gods, primordials, whatever you want to call them, that we do run into are not necessarily going to be able to solve the problems for us. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, I mean, and, and Vash kind of breaks the fourth wall in, in this way a lot of times, right? Where he's like, oh, you're not, you're not helping us. Like, like you guys are gods. You do the thing. You have the power to do it, which makes total sense. Right. I mean, yeah, that's what a person who like, like there's gods that yeah. you're like, why are the hell aren't you handling yeah. this? If this yeah. was really <laughs> happening, if this was like really happening, that's the net. That's the reaction. Any real person would have is like, well, you guys, are the gods, you're supposed to have the power to stop this. So do something. And the gods are like, that's why part of the reason why Orlin was so upset there. <laughs> because he wasn't doing anything. Yeah. But also yeah. that's hearsome. <laughs> like, yeah. like that. I don't, I don't know a whole lot about the Feywild Pantheon. Uh, you know, uh, unfortunately that's just the case. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to learn as much as I can. Um, but I feel like that might just from the feel I've gotten about her hearsome. That might be what he'd actually do. I don't know. Like he, I think that's probably fair for him. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, yeah. Laura's Although been fairly surprised. active in helping us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Forgotten ones helped. Uh, Tulpa's helped. Um, some others may have tried to help. I mean, oh. the star Tulpa has the helped. Tadpole. Uh, yeah. The the uh, the the star has helped Ambien. Uh, pretty directly. Um, oh, and uh, the demon? I can't remember what we called him, but someone helped uh, Havoc. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, Something. <laughs> did, I don't know if we ever got to the revealing that, so I don't want to say too much. I don't think, I don't think we ever... Yeah, I, I don't think it was... I don't think it was ever, like, explained. It was just some figure. <laughs> yeah, well, I know I... That, that you went... You did talk with um Tiamat but I don't remember if anything was said about the oh that was uh wasn't that I thought that was Tim's character the the no we all we all talked with Tiamat yeah yeah, yeah all everyone did cuz I I remember oh, yeah, um yeah, yeah. yeah we each had a one who who was yeah, it? Everybody talked to it. But Tiamat was like, "You need to be more angry." And then like, and the, wasn't in, angry at all. Yeah, in the in the conversation that we had as players after after they were done talking to Tiamat, we were like, 
uh well how was it what what happened and and they're like yeah they, they wanted me to be more angry and stuff and then Byra was like well i'm always angry what what will they do make me happy <laughs> yeah if i don't remember what happened with Byra <laughs> specifically i'll have to go back and watch something when we go back to b team but I do remember, like, having the idea of, like, Tiamat being, like, oh, Vyra's perfect. Like, you were meant to be, uh, like... Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, I think it said that she could be its champion or whatever, and she could kill whatever she wants. And when she came back out of it, she says, yep, you're right, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Foreboding. Um, yeah. <laughs> um... But uh, I know me and Wolf had a conversation about what helped him, but I don't know if I don't think we really revealed. That we anymore. never yeah. revealed anything now. Um, so we'll have to hold on to that for now. Um, as to what I've forgotten is. about that, <laughs> I haven't forgotten about what it is. I still have it. I still have all that stuff written down. I just don't want to reveal it yet because it hasn't been revealed on the show. Yeah, um, no, I, I may have forgotten that we that was a okay. private conversation. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, We've had a few of those, to be honest, uh, about Vash and other things too. Yeah. Which how how much do you want to go into those things? Are there things that should I re-ask questions? You're welcome to re-ask questions because I don't think I, there's a lot of questions you had that I haven't answered in front of everybody else. And I've, I mean, I've had right. private conversations with other players too, but um, uh, you in particular have been asking a lot of questions about the lore. So feel free to open up any of those Whoops. doors. <laughs> Does anyone else want to reveal their secrets first? <laughs> I, you don't I have to reveal any of your secrets. Uh, we do have dead characters that we we probably won't get to learn much about now that they're long oh, gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like? Like oh. Timothy? Timothy be purposefully like more and more crazy as time went on. Was he going to be more crazy? Yeah, that he was, seemed that to was actually my question more... as well. More and more crazy things as time was was going on. I suppose that's a question for Tim more so than me. That, that I thought I, I just realized that. I was on mute when I was trying to answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know that that makes it a bit harder to answer, I guess. Well, so, answering is easy. Us hearing it is harder. Yeah. <laughs> Originally, Tim started going a bit. Uh, obviously, it started with the. I, I guess we should kind of explain what was going on. We were doing a lot of bad chaperoning. I disagree. Um, <laughs> we kept them alive. Were two children that we saved. <laughs> we kept them alive. Yeah, that we, we saved from the village that had been destroyed. And then they turned on Tim when he was uh, going on a solo mission to take them back to a safe town or somewhere where they wouldn't get hurt. Mm -hmm. And they stabbed him in the back and left him for dead. And he almost died in the middle of the forest. While everything else was still going wrong. So it kind of drove him off the edge a little bit. And then when he went back to the group, they had a new set of kids. <laughs> and a monster in the group. Well, and Tim had a conversation with some type of power, didn't he? Like after yeah, and, after and Tim was having conversations with judgment, judgment that he wasn't totally sure were real. Right. Because he he wasn't sure if it was actually the god the Arcana speaking to him or if it was fever dying hallucinations. Mm -hmm. Was that so why he, he thought said he didn't know who his patron was? He thought he was going crazy. He he didn't know what was real and what wasn't anymore. Mm -hmm. And then when he got back to the group, everything was still going poorly, and it was the same exact thing that had just happened that had gotten him almost killed, where they were helping more children, another group of two kids, uh, trying to get them back to their town. And then no one was listening to his warning, so he was worried that everyone was going to die because of it, but mo mostly that he was going to die. Also, when you said he came back and there's two more children and a monster, are you calling Orlin a monster? <laughs> no, he's calling no, that was, no, that was, he was talking Ishu. about Ishu. No, Ishu. Yeah. Okay, because Orlin was there too when you came back. So <laughs> you know, I, I guess, uh, no, when I when came back, I, I guess Ishu wasn't there yet. But when I came back, immediately we went on a new rescue mission 
to save more kids. So, um, what, then we got more kids. I forget, and why, did we, why did we have you go out and res- or deliver or rescue the kids separately from us? Was it because you were she gone? Was miss it was because sessions. I was gone and we kind of needed yeah. a, a oh, thing okay. to fill time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We weren't sure. Yeah, one of the first things you tried to do was get Ishu to eat the kids. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And then, as we kept going, it was... Also, I think Vash was another part of the problem. Yeah. Where it didn't really help that he got buried alive and tortured half to death, (laughs) and then no one believed him. Orlin believed? She... she But she didn't do anything. Yeah, she told both of you to stop being children. Yeah, so she didn't trust anyone. Or he, he didn't trust any of them anymore, really. And then once he started realizing that the visions were real and that he did actually have some sort of greater purpose, he kind of started turning things around and then he died. Yeah, like... Well, That's what being good gets you. Yeah, it was weird because it was like uh, for most of the for most of his run, uh, he was running from combat more so than he was like running towards it. Right. Um, but then by the end, he was like kind of a heroic character. Like maybe he was just fed up and being reckless, but he was running into the combat and he was, he was doing good uh, as far as like all the fighting and stuff goes. And then he gets killed by uh, a fellow party member. <laughs> we even had a, we even had a nice heart to heart, like right before it happened too. Saying, yeah, I really I hope want... you don't die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you phrased it earlier where you got backstabbed by the kids which started your mental breakdown and then you ended by being backstabbed yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I finally That's trusted right. people again it, it got me killed yeah. Orlin's still upset she didn't come out of her trance <laughs> is that did you have a plan for Tim beforehand or Oh yeah, the plan like, was the, whole backstory the plan was that his or... backstory was pretty much the same as the kids that we helped. That's part of why he was so set on helping them. Mm-hmm. Is that okay. part of his backstory is his town got destroyed and his entire family got killed and he was rescued by monks of judgment. And that's why he like joined that order or the, joined that order and followed that arcana and learned their ways is because uh, he wanted to learn how to take revenge, and he wanted to learn why this had happened. And um, he he basically saw two kids in the same exact situation as him. So he his goal was to try to help them, and then they betrayed him. Yeah. So that's part of why he was trying to help them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, he was out there like doing judgments work, finding things that needed to be judged, you know? And um, finding wrongs to be righted, and then it all went wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember, like, one of the first sessions uh, when you guys were all magisters, and uh, uh, I remember Tim uh, saying something like, the court sent us here to die. And, like, one of the first sessions. <laughs> <laughs> Do I remember that? One. Yeah. 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 I remember that. And when we ran into zombies and all kinds of weird and it's like, what? Yeah. Cause you guys were just supposed Fire to be reaction. Uh, select like your your magisters selected by the court, seemingly at random, and you're been you've been sent to figure out what's happened with these other uh magisters that were in that area that have all like vanished, uh un- like not heard from. Um and they think uh they thought that this guy Black Rivers might have something to do with it. Who they thought there might be like a magister that's gone rogue, and uh, all this weird stuff is happening with uh, flesh taking over the areas. There's all these weird stories coming from coming from this the Riverlands, and you're bas- they're basically like, all right, you guys, small team of people, go in and figure out what's going on and report back. Um, and you guys get there, and there's all these other teams of people that have been <laughs> sent in there and killed, basically. Um, yeah, that was. Just- I think when he said that, it was when we'd run into, like, the first particularly gruesome scene you'd ever describe where we ran into someone in a, it was a magister in a house, and I think his, like, his eyes had been burned out or something. Yeah, or torn out. Like, scorched out, Bias. or torn out, something yeah, like, yeah, something yeah. really bad like that. We had to pretty much execute him. Yeah. yeah. 
He was basically like asking you guys to kill him, like put him out of his misery. And uh, he had yeah, no we, problem doing that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that should have been the first warning sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're hurting? I guess I'll just execute you then. Okay. No problem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, this is one of. Sorry. Go, go on. ahead. No, you're fine. Go ahead. I was going to change the subject, so. Yeah, that's fine. You can change the subject. Uh, well, I was going to. This this is one of the, I think this is one of the things we talked or we said that we would talk about is um how what is the magister selection process like and like how did how did this original group of people become magisters? That was uh, gonna be my next question as well because in your uh world so far description you have that they were chosen by the court uh, plucked from their previous lives and trained in secret. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like world so far section. This is the like little paragraph that I use to get to get players to be like, oh, I want to play that game, right? This is what I put in the ad elevator on, pitch. Yeah, the elevator pitch on yeah. RPG Finder, and it says, "Rumors have it that something strange is going on in the low lowlands. Um, communication from village leaders has ceased. They've even stopped paying their taxes. Fleeing survivors and peasants have spewed forth various maddening stories of abominations being birthed. Entire villages being wiped clean overnight and left covered in living flesh and blood." and even travelers from other worlds, and that's just the stuff we can make sense of. If what they say is true, it is affecting reality in unpredictable ways. The court needs information. We need to know what is really happening inside this communication dead zone. We're sending you. You've been chosen by the court, therefore it is ordained by heaven, plucked from your previous lives and trained in secret to root out the most corrupt threats we know of. This is well beyond that. Find out what is happening in our territory. If you can, stop it at all costs. So the... Um, the idea with the magisters here, it's, so there's like more to it that I don't, I might get into some of it. We'll see. We'll see how I feel when I start talking about it. The idea for the magisters was that uh, you're chosen, willingly or not, seemingly at random. It's almost like being drafted into the military or something, but it's almost like a, it's like, almost like a more of an FBI covert ops kind of thing. And so the uh, the public face of the magisters that everyone knows is like, they're people know that they're chosen at random and that they're not necessarily given a choice on whether they want to be a magister or not. It's like, Nope, you, you've been selected. Your name has been drawn from the hat. Um, you are a magister now and you must come with us and train. Um, and they will, I, I think we've talked a little bit about what they'll do if you try to say no, right? Like they'll try to, the court may start destroying your, your life, like ruin your business, um, start, you know, maybe not like hurting people like you know executing people but they're going to find ways to coerce you into just saying yes right like it's not it's not a choice um and uh they do train you in secret and they basically the public face of the magisters are that uh they have a lot of power they can walk into a town and um say uh you know like basically command Pretty much anyone in any town guard or whatever what to do the only people they don't have control of really are uh like page kings uh knights queens who are usually rule over a specific town or area and even on uh on that they're even like even with those people they're almost like on e an equal playing field you know like they're almost considered um equal to those people as far as like what they say um which we kind of saw a little bit in Watim Tam where like you guys were telling them what to do. Um, essentially. Um, uh -huh. now, now it was a little, it was a little bit different where the page was already dying there and stuff. So a lot of their, a lot of their rule was going out the window at the time anyway. Um, but, uh, yes, they're chosen at random trained in secret and they're supposed to basically be in charge of like making sure people pay their the, the public faces like they're making sure people pay their taxes to the court. They're going out and taking down any warlords that pop up and, you know, people that pop up and try to take over an area um, and fight off court armies or whatever. They will take those people out. Um, but uh, the in secret stuff is what their true purpose of the magistrate is. And the true purpose of these magisters is to. Uh, fight off demonic corruption um, to fight supernatural evils. Um, and uh, that's not so much known by the public. That's more so known 
by people who are magisters or people that happen to see them. Uh, people who happen to interact with them might get wind of this. Now, they tr typically might try to keep it secret. Or we've talked about how magisters could walk into a city, burn it all to the ground, and just be like, hey, it was demons. <laughs> and, then just, <laughs> and then just leave, right? Uh, and just be like, that oh, sort of power that. can be abused. Yeah, yeah that that power is abused. Um, certainly, there are, you know, you guys. One of your purposes was. I mean, that's what Grovey did in yeah. the first town that we went to. Yeah, is he went and <laughs> cleansed the place on, on under under the authority of the magistrates, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you guys sort of got roped into that, right? Because like after you left Watamtam and it had been burned to the ground and destroyed, now you guys were trying to save it, um, sort of. Um, sort of. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Agrovi's people were like destroying it, but not not so they can be like, oh, it was demons that did this, but more because they were serving something else. Um, like it wasn't just for fun, like they were doing a thing. Um, and uh, you know, Agrovi's group were part of a subsect of a group that used to run with Lapel, and so he kind of got blamed for that. But after you guys left Watim Tam, uh, there was this whole thing in uh, Nava and Kostatim where like the word had gotten out that magister, magisters had done, done bad. And so there was this bad sentiment uh, about the magistrate. And, um, you know, that we were seeing signs uh, painted on buildings. We're seeing, like, death to the magistrate and stuff like that. Um, and even the uh, court itself is not too fond of magisters uh, currently. Um, that's sort of the way things are. They're Hunting them down is a strong word, um, but they're certainly, like, rounding them up to ask them questions if they know anything. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, like they're looking for them, uh, which is why you guys have been sort of keeping quiet, keeping your badges hidden uh, for those of you that still have them. Um, that kind of most of us are keeping. I, them hidden. A... I think Odin still wears his. Oh, okay. No, I I kept it hidden no. since you guys told me to keep it hidden. You did. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, but... I had another question related to the training and stuff since I wasn't here for those first few sessions. Um, were they trained together or separate? Like, would they have known each other before they were grouped together to go handle stuff? So, just from training, or we could have done it either. So. We could have done it either way. Like, you're kind of just like putting random places to train. Um, I think it probably depends on what part of the world you're rounded up in. Like, they probably mm. they probably have certain regions. So, but I think what we decided, um for this group was that they didn't know each other. They didn't train together. They had been on the road for a few days with each other before we picked up with session one. And that was the premise, right? Like we wanted to start with you guys right in the fire. I think is what I said. I wanted to start with you guys right in the fire and just have you guys leading up to your first thing. You've been on the road with each other for a couple days. Uh, you've just been sort of assembled and put in this group and like told to watch each other's backs. Uh, you're not really sure if you can trust each yeah. other or not. Yeah. Because I think oh, see, we made it a point to ask. <laughs> oh, go on. Yeah, it, no, I, I think I, we made I it a point to ask each other what, um, what like the capabilities of her. Like we we tried to discuss like what can you do, what can I do, and, and like before we actually got to the town. Yeah. But I I kind of imagine the way that the magisters work are like similar to, uh, like Roman police, where they would they would take a bunch of people from one province, train them. But they would never deploy those people in that province because they have ties there. They deploy them in other provinces so that there's never a question of where their loyalty is. Um, first thing, that makes total sense because none of you guys were from the area that uh, we saw with the Lost Village or Watam Tam, if I recall. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, so I think that fits. Um, also, what were you going to say, Ella? No, no, I'm good. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. I think I think that makes sense. You got something, Kyo? Yeah. Um, do we as magisters like how is the court organized? Like, do they have like a hierarchy? Is there like someone at the top, or they're like a group of people at the top, and then? That's a good question. Like, how is the court organized? Hmm. Um, <clears throat> is so, it like the military, <laughs> the government? You know, yeah, there is a military. We've talked about how they have armies, and I think we've even seen some soldiers. Um, the courts uh, don't always get along with each other, right? Is one one of the things. Like we've talked a little bit about how maybe 
because here let's take a look at the because this this world map page kind of helps illustrate some of this um we talked about how the the world is sort of organized into territories um so we've got swords we've got wands we've got coins and we've got cups uh, which are the suits of the tarot uh cards. oh are there multiple courts for each territory uh no there's well sort of um there's there's like multiple armies for each territory right like we've talked a little bit about how the swords are always like over time invading and causing military struggles with the other uh the other suits so They've attacked, uh, I think we talked a little bit about this, Swords, which is the red territory, at some point in the past did attack Wands, which is orange. Um, and that's how the wastes were created. Because uh, So the wastes is that big bald spot on the map where the Wellspring was. Um, and basically, like at some point in the distant past, um, Swords attacked uh, Wands. But Wands is so skilled in magic that they just like just decimated an entire area with magic and they cre that created the waste. So like think like some kind of a magic atomic bomb went off. And when when wands did that to swords, swords is like, okay, we're never me messing with wands again. Like they learned their lesson. And nobody has ever messed with wands since. And wands pretty much keeps themselves. They don't they don't uh they don't really mess around with other people. Uh, swords and coins have always kind of been back and forth and at each other's throats. Uh, they, they fight all the time. The reason that their territory extends way over into uh, that part of the map is because that used to be coins territory. Um, and they've just slowly taken more and more territory from coins. Um, the uh, blooming flesh there on the map, that's, that's the area that we started in. And it has become a basically dead zone <laughs> it's, oh yeah it's surrounded by too. a giant bubble of uh of flesh um cups uh cups is uh, a little bit like wands but they trade with other people they interact with other people they share art um and and philosophy and stuff like that they're not so much focused on controlling everyone else like swords wants to control everyone else through military means Coins wants to control everyone else through trade and manipulation, political strategy, that kind of stuff. Um, creation, which is this big dark spot in the center, is an Im immense city in which, um, so gigantic, just huge urban environment in which all the courts, courts, all the suits, so like uh, swords, coins, cups, and wands all have representation and they all have like territory in this uh, area. So like the court, uh, the court would be like considered like the UN, I guess is the best way to put it. I guess if we're talking like analogies. So arguably highest authority, I suppose, like depending on how you look at things. Uh, but the problem is they can't, they can't keep all like the swords and coins and stuff from fighting each other, nor do they really try. I mean, that's not really what they do. Like, the whole idea is that swords, you know, if swords and coins, like we fight each other to become stronger because this is what we're supposed to do. We, you know, we have to fight each other because we want to become stronger. And um, that's a good thing. That's considered a good thing. And of course, that's a lot of that's propaganda and stuff too. Like it's just an excuse to seize territory or whatever. Um, but the world is always in constant struggle for these reasons. The only time the the like swords and coins and these different places come together is when there's like a big threat that threatens all of them. Um, so like demonic invasions, which have happened, um, the flesh presumably would be one of those threats. The problem is right now the flesh is mainly just affecting swords and coins and really mainly coins. Um, mm -hmm. so there is that it has, it has crossed into some swords territory. Um, I mean, it's right on a border zone. There between so, swords and coins. So the court doesn't really have like a standing army. They just have like an elite force in, in the magisters. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. I would say they have like an army, like the UN has an army, I think. Um, but it's just it's just significantly smaller than uh than like the swords army or the coins army or even maybe the Cups army or Wands army. But I have a feeling like Wands army is just like a bunch of uh, spellcasters and psychics. 
Um, the mm. thing is with a court is if they want to raise an army, they can. They can just draw people from any. They of draw the- from the four different ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can just. Yeah, so like if they, their armies would probably be more elite, right? Like they would get the best of the best. Whereas like Swords Army is just going to get ground level grunts. They're just going to take people and put swords in their hands, put armor on them, and just tell them to go to the front lines and start hacking and slashing, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And coins, I mean, they're going to have armies. It's just that they try to control things. uh, You know, they focus on other things. They're not all about the physical combat. They're about, like, like cutting off your enemy's supply lines so that they can't can't reinforce their troops, so that their troops are going to run out of food. Uh, because they can't get supplies in, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and of course, some of those trade routes might be controlled by cups who are known to be like seafarers and shipbuilders and very mm-hmm. much into the arts and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's where Odane's from. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so you have this weird thing where it's like, it's almost like rock, paper, scissors with all the different things. Like they all, they're all good at some things and bad at others. And if they all just like work together, um, they they would make one whole force, right? Like they make like they would they would cover all each other's weaknesses, balance, and you know like reinforce each other's strengths if they could all just like stop fighting each other. Um, but that's just kind of the nature of the world. It's supposed to be in this constant state of struggle and flux. That's kind of what I want to do with it uh, when we started the campaign. So you said that the court is sort of like the UN. Does that mean that they're elected officials or how do they? Yeah. So like rulers, um, I don't think that they're, I don't think they're elected. I don't think there is democracy uh, here. I think that um, like, if we're looking at creation, um, there's probably, uh, let's say like a king, queen, a knight, and a page in creation. And I want to say that uh, one of them is from each suit. Um, so, like, let's say the court's ruled over by a, a king, a queen, a knight, and a page. They all have different responsibilities, right? Like, the knight's going to focus on on the military aspect of things. Maybe the magistrate is under the knight's control. Um, and, uh, you know, like, they all have different, uh, different uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, areas that they cover, like different areas of that they specialize in as far as like managing things. Um, and yeah, I think as far as like uh, making everything fit together nicely, there are one of them that comes from each. So like one of them is from swords, one of them is from cups, one from coins, one from uh, wands, so on and so on. And like when, uh, when one of them is killed off, because we know from early on that when like a knight, page, king, or queen is killed off that they reincarnate kind of like a, a, a Buddha or whatever, and they have to go out and find this person. So that may be the time that may coincide with times when there's strife between the um, different suits. Right. So like, cause I think they could change suits. Like if, if one of the, if they die off, maybe the reincarnation was actually born in coins instead of swords, like their previous incarnation was. So basically like, let's say you have one from each and then the knight dies and he was the swords. Right. So, now there's no swords representation controlling, like making all the calls at the top of the court. Um, and his replacement, uh, his reincarnation just happens to be from coins. So now we have two people from coins uh, controlling, you know, the top power spots in the court. We have one person from cups and one person from wands. Where's our swords uh, people at? So what's going to happen now is the, peop- the two people from coins that are making all these high level decisions are going to plot things that are going to, you know, be better for coins and not so good isn't for there, swords. Isn't so, there also priest in each yeah. place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also priests okay. and and there's this even is like just an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- yeah. There's even magic users and different things. It's just like the wands. Like wands typically is like way more. Their culture is based around magic. Like, um, and in and that kind but of. But I. I bring that up because I thought the the high priest or whatever, like in uh, Fatim Tam, um, I thought they were also considered one of the high ranking officials. So I was just thinking they're always out of balance anyways. Count. If there's 
if there's more than just the four that that you listed for your example yeah yeah i mean they could always like they they could always have like other even like village elders or whatever or people that they just go mm -hmm. to like in or point you know for certain positions like a high abbot i think was the person that you're talking about in uh in Watson, in tam if i recall um and Maybe. there may also be some like towns or cities that aren't governed by a king queen knight and page at all there could be some that are like i think um what we did with Namvan coast tennis is actually like ruled over by the monasteries or the citadel or something mm -hmm. i forget exactly how we did that i'll have to go back uh, so i take it uh, because reincarnation is a big deal in this uh setting when those types when the knights uh queens kings and pages are reincarnated you mentioned it could go from, you know, a knight that was a knight of swords could become a knight of coins or a page of coins or it changes. Do they have, do they remember their past lives or is it just their new person? Um, so the, uh, here's where we might run into some discrepancy, right? Like the, um, the public perception would be that, yeah, absolutely. They remember their past lives because the Dalai Lama like remembers his past lives, right? Or whatever. Um, I'm not really sure. Cause like one of the tests for the Dalai Lama when they, when they're looking for the reincarnation is they bring him, they bring things that belong to the previous Dalai Lama and they mix it in with a bunch of stuff that didn't. And they ask the person to pick out the thing that belonged to the previous Dalai Lama. And if they get it right, it's like a sign that, oh, they are the reincarnation cause they knew that this belonged to them in the past life. Right. Um, that's a real thing that happens. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's probably like, a a similar thing um like in the world um people are like yeah they definitely remember their past life um but we don't know if that's really how it works like we <laughs> we haven't we haven't had enough um close up sight of that to know for sure i bet in reality they just take uh oh did i, lose, did I, I think i'll just cut out <laughs> okay in reality they just take <laughs> They they do really detailed journal entries, yeah. like a captain's log kind of thing. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, or um, parts of it could be total BS, and we would never know, right? Like, we don't we don't really know for sure. And I kind of wanted to leave it open, so that for in case I wanted to decide to go any way at any given time, I could basically. <laughs> Right, you never fill in more blanks than you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Makes sense. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, the the magisters belong to the court. They don't belong to any one particular, uh, like swords, coins, whatever. They belong to the court, or they're like, yep. you know, they're soldiers for the court, or like FBI, uh, for the court, or whatever. Um, my general idea for the uh for the magisters was like fbi but like x files xbi <laughs> x files fbi so like you're the <laughs> you're the agents they send after like crazy stuff you know nice. aliens and stuff um interesting seen that show uh yeah x, x files was so good um uh i haven't like i don't know about the newer ones because they did bring it back for a couple seasons recently but like the 90s mm. the 90s show was some of the best televisions ever existed um but Does anyone um, else have any questions i have another question that's like related to what we're currently doing yeah um how much roughly would you say uh we're going to be in the Feywilds? Oh, like how many sessions? How, much, how long? How much, how much longer, roughly? Um, I would say we're about halfway through the Feywild arc. It kind of depends. Oh, wow. It's a long arc. Yeah, it's it's our longest. I think I said that when we started, it was going to be our yeah. longest. Um, yeah. So it kind of depends on you guys, too. Like, I, I've mentioned to a few of you that there's some optional Feywild stuff. Um, and that optional <laughs> section would be the Fade arc, I think. I mean, it could be over tomorrow if we want to give up on Obron. No. <laughs> could be. Could be yeah. Orlin will give up. Um, 
but I got some. Everyone stuff. looks around. Feywild seems fine. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is fine. Everything that's left is here. That's fine. That's is, okay. Is that okay yeah. with everybody if we're only like halfway ish through? It's fine with me. Yeah. I was just wondering. Rough estimate. Okay. We we cover a uh, surprisingly small amount of territory for as long as we've been playing. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. And like when I plan a lot of this stuff out, I didn't like some some sections I didn't know would take as long. Right? Like I didn't know the section uh after uh Irigai's Grove would, would take so long. I didn't know it would take so long to get from that but from that <laughs> section to the beginning of the uh the section we're at now. Because it's arcs organized yeah. in sections, I guess. And uh uh yeah, that was kind of a long section there with the plants. Well, it you know. seems like we're probably gonna be in the Feywilds for another year, guys. Has it been another well, year? Has it, has it been a <laughs> Maybe year? Maybe half a year. I don't think it's been. I don't think it's even been half a year, has it? I don't think so. Uh, let's see. Let's let's take a look at. Since things. we got to the Feywilds, it hasn't been that long. It's no. been about three yeah, months, I'd say. Yeah, but um, we might be in here for a whole year. If we might be in here for another six, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, if his estimation is that we're only halfway through, and the fact that some things have been going longer, way longer than. Um, <laughs> Well, that's because we went to Maze twice. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And the plants really held you guys No, up. the plants were the really bad part, yeah. The yeah. maze was not that bad. It was the soul-sucking, <laughs> won't let us put the damn dome up plants. Yeah. yeah. Yep. No, actually, um, it was the flesh that was taking that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, yeah. Uh, the plants were flesh plants, though. Um and uh so here here we started the Feywild arc around episode 36 37 because the uh the big fight with the copper hell was episode 35 um so if we just do episode 36 that was put on youtube on august 8th um so it's been 15 sessions we've missed quite a few but you know four per month it's been four months yeah yeah over just over four months that we've been at that's the Feywild arc. Now we didn't get into the Feywild until episode thirty-seven for sure. I think, um, which was <laughs> August eighteenth. My notes, my notes are sh are showing um, August ninth. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I probably just didn't put the video up until eighteenth. Um, and we yeah. definitely uh, spent at least six months on B team. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I mean, it was a while. I don't know. Let's well, we can look, right? We put a lot of sessions in the B team overall. Like it was supposed to be a quick thing, and then it absolutely wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So well, then, yeah, you were you were a goat for a long time. Yeah, was I was like, a goat for three sessions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a month. That's a month. <laughs> yep. Uh, so the the last B team arc wrapped up. On episode 33, the Hellmouth, that was the last episode for that B team arc. The first one was. We had any questions from chat, by the way? I'm not sorry. I, haven't, I keep checking and I haven't seen any. Yeah, I haven't seen any. If you um, have questions, guys, let us know. Yeah, Unrooted was here earlier, but uh, wow, there's quite a few people in the chat right now, too. If you guys got any questions about the lore, that's kind of what we're doing is like a QA thing right now. Um, so just feel free to like pop up in the chat and be like, hey, I got this question I've wanted to know. Um, Unrub was here earlier, but uh, he might not still be around. Um, so I don't, I don't know. But if you guys got questions, let us well, know. Um, but we'll also post this and, as a separate video. So. And maybe if you have a question later on and you want us to do this again, you can let us know because we yeah. might not do it again if people don't really care for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I don't know. Just I keep might... asking all my questions in private. <laughs> it might be because I. It, 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 might, it might be good for just you guys to do this from time to time. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. which is fine because you guys are going to have better questions than the uh, the the chat will in some cases. I think because uh, chat may not have seen every episode. You guys played through every episode, so yeah. Um, and yeah. I well. I don't know. I guess I have a, a, I, I a couple questions still. So. More questions about what happened before we started streaming. Yeah. 
Well, it's hard if they don't have a, a decent idea of what that was. It's hard to even ask questions about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, we've been we've been fairly vague. Like we we kind of laid out the the high level things. So yeah, I mean, basics of what happened before stream uh, was the whole Watim Tam arc, uh, which was. Uh, you guys, we started off with you guys being grouped up. You're new, new magisters. You don't really know each other. You've been sent to the Riverlands or the Lowlands to sort of figure out this mystery that we mentioned earlier. Uh, rogue magisters, that kind of thing. Um, you guys get down there. You find in a, a village where everyone has basically been killed or disappeared. All the food's rotted. There's zombies everywhere. You do rescue two kids there. Um, you track down some of the guy, some of the guys that were that like wiped the place out. These cultist type guys that were in black robes. Uh, you fight them, you kill them. Uh, for the most part, you save their leader for the kids to finish off. You put them in a barrel on the docks and you set, and you have the kids like stab them and set it on fire. And then you push the barrel into the water. The water in the area had some weird effects on it. It was kind of like jelly. Like, uh, it was less viscous than water typically is. It was thick. It was gray. It was sludgy. It was, bad news it was like diseased or cursed or something there was some, some bad mojo going on with the water there at the time um so you guys pushed him you know you get rid of the, that was a grovey the leader of these cults um basically kill him or have the kids kill him in this barrel and then push him into that water uh then you guys ran into some guards who were out looking for some missing kids that been kidnapped by kobolds you fought an ogre on the way, he fought some stuff on the way. We can skip over like some of the random encounters. Yeah. Um, you go to the kobold cave, you save the kids, and there's a kobold there who really doesn't want to die. Um, so, and, and he's also kind of uh, he's he's got magic. None of the other none of the other kobolds really had magic, um, and he can talk, which is kind of odd too, I suppose. Uh, and you guys end up liking him, so you take him with you. Um, along well, with that's, that's charmed him. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that was my best contribution to the group. Yeah. Was yeah. Getting issue. <laughs> yeah. You charmed him. That's right. Cause he tried, I remember he tried to charm you, you guys or something and it didn't work. Yeah. So I tried it back yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> and so you had him following you around and you fed him too. Uh, and so you're like, which you're, bought his loyalty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys ended up keeping him basically. Um, and then you got, those kids you you got to safety for real um uh, the other kids tim had taken tried to take back to the town and like you said they stabbed him betrayed him and tried to kill him and then ran off into the forest uh the the jungles or whatever um and uh we don't know what happened to them but it wasn't good um Wait, we see one we kid see back, one? back yeah. yeah what and the fire and the when we were Fleeing um Tim Tam Town. Yeah. And and uh, we were trying to save Drogo. I think Orlin saw through Faye's eyes uh, a kid that when she described him, um everybody it was else one of the kids. Guys. Yes. Yeah. But he was missing yeah. his we eyes. We failed that by the way. Uh yeah, yeah, you failed that encounter because you guys decided to run instead of Fight. Oh, it's not hard. save Drogo. Drogo died. Like <laughs> yeah, so there was this whole thing where <laughs> Drogo was another player that was uh that was playing with us for those earlier sessions, and then he kind of just disappeared. Um basically. <laughs> uh he was like, Hey guys, I've got to go to I'm going out of the country for a couple weeks. This is right around the time, if I recall, it COVID was starting to kick off. And uh, he was like, hey, guys, I'm going out of the country for a couple weeks or something. I'll be back in a couple weeks. And so we had this way of writing him off where he had basically gone out drinking and got locked up in jail. And then you guys were going to pick him up from jail. But instead, because he never came back, uh, he wasn't at the jail. And Agrovi's men had attacked the town at that point, so they had taken him hostage and were using him as like a bargaining chip uh, to you guys. Because, yes, you had killed Agrovi, but he came back from the dead. Um, and, uh, you know, he had, he had reassembled, uh, some guys and now they're, they're scarier. They're <laughs> empowered by undeath. Um, at least he was, um, yeah, he also took, um, the, the chest. 
Yes. Yeah. Chest of wear rat hearts. <laughs> yeah. My so, first acquisition. Yeah. So one of those random encounters, uh, one of those random encounters, uh, was some wear creatures, uh, wear rats. Um, and this is after they met Orlin. Yeah. Mm. And it was like a flesh monster spin on wear creatures. And, uh, yeah, they kept like, even after you had downed them and killed them or whatever, they're, they were still like regrowing and like, you couldn't you couldn't put them down for good, so you cut their hearts out and put them in a chest, which started growing together in this weird lump of, of flesh and stuff. And Vash was doing experiments with it, uh, and uh, you left it in the inn in Watam Tam. And when Grovy uh, Grovy's men attacked, they took the chest um, as it well. Was as heavy, all right. Drogo was and, uh, <laughs> was, was Kupe still with us at this time? He was. Yeah, he yeah. Was. Yes. I think he left right before a Grovy attacked. I think he left after we fought uh in the in the town center. Yeah. Was he there for that fight? I don't think he was. I think I think he was there when we fought to get into the town. Oh. But I don't think he was there okay. for the fight in the town with oh, the, okay. like the shades and all that. Right, yeah, that's true. I don't know. He left. He I left, had a fight to get into town. It wasn't terrible. I, I think he left right after Drogo. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't long after uh, Drogo left. Um, but yeah, I think he was there for that fight when the page turned into the giant shadow monster and released this the shit the shadows on the town. Oh, maybe he was. I don't know. I can't remember. He left sometime around that. I point. thought. I thought he left. Um. Either during that or like that would right right before like we had just finished planning everything and right before the actual battle. Yeah, I was pretty sure it was right before the shade battle. <laughs> That's what I thought. Like I I don't remember him being there for that fight, but I'm not totally certain. Yeah. He wasn't there, but he left. Are we saying that he like disappeared? And right he just that. he just walked off into the forest. Is I think what <laughs> the explanation was. Yeah, like, he just like wasn't there the next day. Like oh okay, like I just, we tried I, to look for him once or twice, but yeah, he snuck he snuck away, right? Like he just sort of abandoned. Yeah. I guess. Um, and that was sort of. I, I think he rolled at like a nat twenty. Yeah, like he was a very self. sneaky guy. Yeah, and then we just never found him ever again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, First druid I've ever seen that put his his twenty on character creation into decks instead of wisdom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen, he I've threw seen darts. that before. I remembered he he's just like on a combat. He was just sleeping and then Yeah. He was, <laughs> <laughs> I remember he was character. That. Yeah. Like, I, oh, I remember I remember he whistled a lot and got naked a lot. Yeah. yeah. Like, Wait, there was that too. Didn't, didn't, children. didn't he do that whenever he was going to change shape? Because he thought he had to take his clothes off to, to uh, I think shape. so, yeah. 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 I, I, remember, I remember the fight at the gates when you guys fought the gnolls and he like ate, he like wild shaped and then ate in some of them. And yeah, like, he ate, he had a, yeah. And then he changed, As a tiger. Yeah, yeah. He turned into a tiger and he like ate some of the corpses of the gnolls. And then we turned back, he started barfing. <laughs> <laughs> and he was naked. And he was throwing up gnoll corpse things. Yeah. Um so I remember was, getting into the gates it was a ordeal in itself. Yeah, yeah. they wouldn't so, let us in. Um we ended up Tim wanted to be Yeah, Tim wanted to be the town guard. Yep. Yeah. Right. One of the people killed one of the one of the uh, refugees that were locked outside the gate. Yeah, yeah. That's how we guilted him into like, okay, we're into arresting you now. In. You just <laughs> lost your position. Open the doors because we're magistrates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they had was to that how you. Tim got the captain's hat too and started saying he is the new captain? I think yeah, so. I think so. Yeah. Um, you still with us, Tim? Maybe not. All right. I couldn't quite hear. What? <laughs> what? 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 You might be having internet issues. Okay, I can so, I can hear better again. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Tim reprimanded the guards and then like took took some loot and the then captain. banished him to the jungle. I remember him writing like a decree or something at some point. Banished him. Yeah, he tried to. He tried to. He tried yeah. to be a a boss. 
the new. I had the helmet and everything. Yeah. yeah. And I think, uh, we 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 ended up meeting, um, oh, the guy is Saint Strated Lapel. In yeah. in um Watts and Tim in the, the in the inn yeah yeah and that's where the yeah. the dog had, house that's where he had the whole thing where he was uh, he was like yeah I don't like to be called Black Rivers that's sort of like a name I was given as like a punishment or whatever and uh, yeah and they, there was also the thing where he knew uh, Fee from the time she was a kid yep um and. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, Timothy uh, Mahjong tiles that heal people, and Vash still has them. <laughs> yeah, he died. Okay, I, <laughs> I uh, do still have them there, and I haven't even used any of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, they left like a they leave like a tattoo on you of the uh, tile, right? Yeah. Like whatever the tile is. Yep. Um, had um, had Fee lost her first horse by this time? Oh, like the first one, and then the replacement mount we got Wait, got no. killed. I think <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't have a horse when I met her. Yeah, no, she she, she got, got the her horse. first horse in town before we in left. Town. I think. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, because it was right. just yeah. like a a draft horse. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then she got a war horse. I think. On, no, I I think I remember like during the battle before going in, there was a horse there. You like jumped on top of it and then it ran away. Yes, yeah, it was. It was oh, hooked. Yeah. I, I might I might have helped you find one. Yeah, with like find <laughs> animal or something. It was. Hooked. You tried to grab an elk or yeah, a we... deer. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember. I was horse. gonna get you an elephant at one point too, but we just never found one. Right. I remember. Well, Ishu has, has one. Yeah, Ishu has one, so it's all good. <laughs> Uh, I remember <laughs> that uh, there was like a outside the gate to Watson Tam when, during that null fight because there was like a bunch of people crowding the gate trying to get in. Nobody knew if they were sick and stuff. And yeah, there was the guard who rolled a crit one and accidentally shot the the one uh, civilian, accidentally killed him or whatever. Um, but there was a horse hooked up to a carriage, and uh, there was something that happened where it was Fee or Odin or somebody jumped on top of the horse or like. He, yeah, jumped, he, he jumped on top of it and then like rolled a bad animal handling check. Yeah, and, and it, ran it, into the forest. <laughs> yeah, just took, took off running. He's first horse. Yeah, I Do think that's have when you decided the multi-class paladin. Yeah. Sorry, what did you say? Multi-class. Yeah. Plus, like, few really wanted to ride into like animals, whichever, like. Or enemies. Oh, here's something Those I can things. tell you guys, because you guys are never gonna ask this question, but I want to go ahead and tell you this because it it might it might just cut a little bit deeper. Um guess who Seraphina could have gotten as a mount. Guess who the unicorn? Seraphina Yeah. Really? Sure. Yeah, the unicorn, yeah, Agape. Uh, that would have been way too OP. Endless spell <laughs> would be too OP. She would I, just be like touching her all the time. She gets her like I, smite. Well, I would put yeah, a limit. Probably... I would I would put a limit on the spell slot. So the healing thing he does is only supposed to be three times a day, but I just like I got a little liberal with it, just you know, for you guys. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean I would put a limit on that. Like I would have uh if Seraphina was there when you guys met him, I would have probably built him a little less op but you still like riding around on at the very least a freaking unicorn which is like which is like, really cool about seraphina yeah. died one session before finding the mount yeah. <laughs> oh well, seraphina already had a mount yeah, true. Well, that, yeah. Cool. That, at that point you did have the owl but you could have had both now this one the unicorn, you were, <laughs> like he teleports, so, so I guess you could summon him, but hey. you, you wouldn't need to. But he has teleport, so there's that. I'm just scared of it dying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's that. I mean, we did learn that mounts can die. <laughs> <That's> the... <laughs> yes, we did. First thing. And hawk bros. Yep. Yep. And the hawk was sent to find K. Coupe, if I recall. And yep. It, yeah. yeah. It Came was... back corrupted and then was cooked. Yep. I hope y'all got sick from that. <laughs> I remember Tim trying to catch it in the air. He was like flying around <laughs> when it came back. He had a fly spell. 
and uh and like i remember like being like yep you reach out and you grab you go to grab the hawk as it as it flies by you and your hands touch it and you look down at your hands and they're covered with these flesh worms and you're like oh <laughs> you, <had to> <laughs> he, he had to make a save to like try to like get the worms off his hands and he made the save so he didn't get corrupted by the, <laughs> the flesh but that could have been death right there uh, at that time we didn't have removed curse and stuff uh, it did no, that's pretty low we level. Did have, we did have Avachai though. He joined us after Tim Tim Town got destroyed and before we got to that that game. Right. Yeah, and you guys, uh, it was another random encounter where you guys came upon some bandits basically, and he happened to be a priest of death, and uh, there was a whole thing where he was like uh, with him and Fee, where he saw like Fee as like being an angel of death. Basically, so it was almost like a like a sacred calling, like it was meant to be. Um, so that's and then it was, was. yeah, <laughs> and then it was, and then Cause... he got turned to stone. Uh, ah, know. he'll come back. We'll see. <laughs> uh, but but uh, yeah. Um, what else? So then there was like the Pell's camp and that whole section, which Wolf wasn't really there for uh no but you guys got to lapel's camp and then basically what happened with vash is tulpa took over his body when you guys went to sleep one night and you guys got up the next day and you're like oh he's not around that's weird his stuff is still here and i think i think tim like cut up his bedroll or something like that yes he did yeah i <laughs> cut it up and i spilled ball bearings in his bag <laughs> yeah yeah this it's... was a this was after vash tried to s bury him alive right yeah after succeeded. he did bury him alive yeah. Yeah. Succeeded. We made the golden... <laughs> he made the golden acorn when when we all donated gold to oh, yeah, the golden then... acorn and then, and like then timothy stole it <laughs> Yeah. Did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, he, and then he, he got the camp first, and then he like took like a kid, and then like tried to kill it in front of everyone in the camp. Right? Yeah, I remember something like that. Like him was the first one there. He infiltrated the camp, but then yes. he like took and he tried to kill some kid. random young kid. Yeah, some yeah. squire. <laughs> And Lapel had to like knock him unconscious or something, right? Yeah, yep. to stop him. Yeah, like, to try, and he then... was trying to talk him down, and uh, he couldn't. I think. I think he... Orlin was found after that, right? She was the no. first one there that wasn't well, you, conscious. You came back after that, if I recall. Uh, you were found, like you returned. This is this is when you went back to the Feywild, and uh, yeah, yeah. But w what I mean is. Is she she showed up after Timothy showed up, but before the rest of the party? Because I remember yeah. her oh, going yeah. and wasting time. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. went to arriving camp. I remember you interacting with two of Lapel's like magisters that were working under him, and one was like this tough talking chick monk, and the other one was this guy with a gun, basically who was just like an. And she was, <laughs> and she was worried about Timothy because they had him unconscious. Yeah. And so, like, and then uh, Tulpa takes over Vash's body. You guys wake up the next day after getting there, after the rest of the group arrives. And uh, Vash is gone. You guys were about to start looking for him. And then I think Fee and Lapel had, like, a duel, you know? Like, like yeah. yeah. Like, he was meddling. I think that, was the, I think that was the night before. Oh, okay. We no, were that inside was, the that was the morning. We, we, the morning. It, was, it was that morning. Um, Fee had had talked to him about it and and uh then the next morning is when it happened and i think it yeah. was originally just for a horse all fee wanted was a horse yeah and then she won the horse and then, and then she wanted his sword too <laughs> did he lost the fight though if i recall yeah i right. think she lost yeah she lost but he gave you this the horse anyways and he gave you a a, a um, and we never get to use the horse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah. That was horse too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So where does the? Oh, go on. Here's what happens. So, uh, he gives the horse and he gives you like a magic weapon, and then you guys uh -huh. go down into the ruins because because their camp was like set up above these ruins that were similar to the uh, 
the underground, like the stone in uh, Watson Tan that you guys had like gathered all the people in. You tried to fit as many people in as you could. It was similar to that, if I recall. And you like, mm -hmm. so you guys go down into the ruins and you see like there's magisters that are set up on guard in there. Um, and Lapel is like taking you uh, back to the back of the ruins, if I recall. Didn't, yeah. didn't some of the uh, guards say that Vash oh, came that's through right. saying that yeah. Tulpa gave him permission? Vash. Yeah, yeah. Or not Tulpa, sorry. Uh, Lapel. Uh, yeah, yeah. He had, Vash had come through and he had convinced them somehow. Um, probably, Tulpa did. Um, somehow, probably using mental powers. Yeah. Uh, convinced them to that uh, yeah he had permission from lapel and they were like some of them were like scratching their heads like like it didn't really make sense but it made sense at the time um what am i checking in in discord um 11 11 oh okay yeah do we need to wrap up do we need to, <laughs> <laughs> do we need to wrap? it's been an hour and a half yeah when kind of um but long story you guys are, some, you guys for can some continue. reason, some of us need sleep for some reason. Though, you guys can continue. I just, need to go, I just need to go to bed. Okay. So you guys can continue. All right. Well, thank you for staying up so late. To No problem. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, thanks, guys. Good night. Walk down have memory great, road. Okay, night. Great, yeah. great night. A great Good night. night. And uh, night. we'll wrap this up pretty quickly. Um, and long story short, you guys get down to the ruins. You find out Vash has been down there. Tulpa has been down there walking around in his body. You guys walk up to uh, the next room, like past those guards, and Vash is like standing there, right? And uh, you can mm -hmm. make make eye contact with him, and then he ca he casts Thunderclap, and it blows all the ma There's like he's in a room with magisters, and there's like he an altar. He grinned at us too. Yeah, and he kind of smirked. He yeah, and then because I was I hadn't decided because we didn't know if Wolf was coming back at that point. So I didn't know if I was going to make, I didn't know for sure what I was going to do. Um, if he was going to be a villain or something. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, so, yeah, there was like this altar in the center of the room. You guys are watching from down this hallway. Um, and there's like this altar in the center of the room and you guys spot him. And I think Tim casts like Eldritch blast on him or something and hit him and like knocked him back against the wall or something. And he smirked and cast thunderclap and like blew the magistrates back away from him, knocked a couple of them out. And he st stands up on this altar in the center of the room and he like smirks at you guys. And then the flesh like comes down from the ceiling and grabs and pulls him up into the ceiling. Uh, and then he disappeared. And then you guys ran in there like, what's going on? And, and then uh, you went into the room where there was like a dragon skeleton, right? Yep. We fought a dragon. Was uh, it? The bone uh... dragon. It was a brain stealer dragon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tim almost died. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did. Um, and you had help, like you had Lapel with you, and you had a two couple soldiers. Yeah, two magisters were there fighting too. Um, and basically, that like helped. you guys are in this room where there's like a river of blood, uh, that flows through the center of the room. But there's like this bridge over it. On the other side of this bridge, there's all kinds of skulls and stuff everywhere. Like this, this place was clearly. Uh, m like marked by death, like the Arcana death somehow. And there's like this, this... was the Go first ahead. time that we found out that dragons sacrificed themselves. Yeah, in the past, right? Yeah. So there was like this dragon skeleton on this altar, and it was like chained down. And Lapel told you guys about how this was like this awesome dragon that basically like was sacrificed for some purpose, like p potentially like to hold the flesh at bay or. We don't really know. Um, and while you guys are in there, the flesh like starts uh, creeping in and uh, basically takes over this dragon and some flesh gets on it and it spreads quickly and turns into like a brain sealer dragon that you guys fight. Um, and it killed, it killed, uh, I think at least one of the magisters, maybe both of them. Um, and it was it almost killed Tim. Um, and Lapel got infected with flesh corruption. Uh, and then you guys managed to finish off the Brain Slayer Dragon, and the whole place starts collapsing and, and crumbling in on itself, and you're trying to get out. And I remember you guys go up to the stairs to, like, uh, to get out of the ruins, and the stairs just come apart in front of you. So there's no way up, and you guys are trapped down here. 
and lapel makes like a last ditch effort to cast a spell to teleport everyone out but uh you guys get separated and so like all of you guys minus lapel just appear in some random field and fall <laughs> like i think you guys just appeared like up in the air if i recall that was one of the last few sessions before we started streaming right yeah it was right right before we started the the streaming arc um because you guys were right outside of Namavan Kostaten then if i recall um and so like we see you guys appear and that was how we ended that season i guess or whatever uh we see you guys appear and you guys uh get up and gather yourselves and start walking towards Namavan Kostaten and then we see uh like we cut to like another field somewhere relatively close by um but a different location we see lapel appear the same way but he's like very wounded and unconscious and he's got this flesh corruption on him and we saw like some bandits or some dark cloaked figures probably devils um finding him basically um and recognizing that he might be of some worth uh and sort of gathering him uh to bring devils him. the bandit group not yeah. not actual devils yeah, devils the group, not yeah. not like literal. It's an important <laughs> distinction because the devils yeah. are the uh, what was it the low down, dirty, smoldering devils that are like a the crime organization that Elduin belongs. to. Biker gang, biker gang, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, tri <laughs> triad or uh, yeah, however, however you want to look at and we it. We stole an in from them. Yeah, yeah, because uh, they control everything. And it was sort of like stolen, and then. The leader was like, okay, you can have the end <laughs> kind, kind of thing as a way to like make peace uh, with you guys. Because um, they are like sanctioned by the Arcana. That's the weird thing. Even though they are a crime syndicate, um, the devil, the Arcana, the devil, uh, is, is backing them. So they're, they're not really... Like, guards aren't going to go arrest them and start... <laughs> unless they catch them doing something really bad. Um, they're not going to like be busting them up anytime soon or anything. They run the dirt, which that part of the, the city is run by them instead of guards. Kind of. Um, that's the thing. Keeps the roof raff out of the way. But that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much the summary of everything before stream. It's the official summary. <laughs> um, much longer than 10 minutes. Ration. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then we basically picked up with a stream, I think, start of Nam Van Kostin. So Crossroads. Um, yeah. You guys got Let's any see. questions? Oh, I was going to say this too. There is more to the uh, magistrate magisters like how they're selected why they're selected um there is more to that that you guys will learn at some point i hope maybe <laughs> so I, won't, I won't i won't spoil it here um but yeah you guys got any other questions who were the blue armored elves I can't spoil that. Ah, yeah, damn it! I tried. I will say this. I will say this. I have a theory. <clears throat> I will say this. There may be some big clues to that coming up soon, um, and uh, it has something to do with that optional. What I said was like an optional section in the Feywild arc. Um, there might be some some hints uh, there uh, in the Fade arc. We will see. Yeah. I think I'm trying to remember like what what could be talked about and what couldn't I think we could save some for next time <laughs> <laughs> save some for the next Q&A yeah and this way we could take like actually write down our questions instead of forgetting all about them. <laughs> you should have done that. Like yeah. I did. It's funny because yeah. it, was, it was Ella's idea to kind of write down I questions. know. <laughs> yeah, what happened there? 
and uh, uh it's okay that's it's all right <laughs> it's uh it's fine so i i didn't share it out as, on social media as early as i wanted to either but that's fine because we're gonna uh, do more of these um i did share it out uh like earlier today like like several hours before the stream oh <laughs> that's not quite yeah, early it's not, yeah i wanted to put it out a couple days ahead of time i didn't i forgot I had a lot going on this week um by the way i have recorded the first, adult is tough <laughs> i have recorded the uh the first uh uh the first video for the fallout series so i just need to edit it um but finally i uh finally found the time to record that it's only been like two months since i had uh wanted to do it or something like a month Oof. a month or something um something crazy like that um but it's just been wild and honestly like prepping for this show comes first that's really what it comes down to mm. um it takes a while yeah yeah Especially like I, uh, you know, I try to put these sections in where I'm like, okay, this will tie them up for a bit. This will give me more time to do some other things. I'll prep all this stuff in advance and I won't have to prep between sessions as much. Like that plant section was kind of like that, the plant and the maze section where I had all that stuff mm -hmm. ready to go. And like Tim kind of called this where it was like, yeah, this is kind of a meant to be, to be a delay, something to occupy our time for a couple weeks. Uh, and yeah, he was right on the money with that. Um, that's really what it was. So I could prep some, I could, basically to buy me time to prep some other things. Um, uh, it was a cool encounter though. Yeah. 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 It was different. Were you, um, were you worried? We were just like, <laughs> like, oh, well, our weapons are gone. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I knew, I knew by that point, um, that I was about to drop a really heavy fight on you. Um, like I, I, I planned the 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 big fight with Beholder and stuff originally to kind of be like after leaving this place, um. But after the, uh, I think it was after we, I, maybe it was like two sessions before, one or two sessions before, where uh, we had I saw the end of the plants and Devour and the maze stuff. How I was pretty sure how it was going to end, and I was like, all right, I'm going to have to drop a huge fight on him. Like, it's time. Like, I've, I, I've worn them down, and I've kind of taken it easy on them as far as combat goes. Which I, I no offense, but I had for a couple sessions there. Like the, I wouldn't say the ear guy fight was taking it easy on you guys, but I feel like the displacer beast and like everything that happened after ear guy and before the tower was kind of like taking it easy on you guys. I'm guessing Ira guy is the copper prophet guy. No, Ira guy is the dryad. Oh, Ira guy's yeah. She's oh, the right, 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 right. Yeah, the copper fight definitely wasn't taking it easy on you. That was a big fight. Yeah. Um, the the Ira guy fight. I mean, you guys ended up working it out with her, but you had to fight all the other things that were there. That wasn't really like me taking it easy on you, but it wasn't like a. It was a, it was a hard fight. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it wasn't like a big boss encounter. You know, um which like the copper herald was a big boss encounter the the brain sealer dragon was a big boss encounter the uh the forgotten depths the end of the forgotten depths dungeon big boss encounter um the Bra brain sealer dragon i don't know if i mentioned that big boss encounter um but uh the the encounter with the dryad was like to kick like a nice solid fight but not a big boss encounter to kick off the uh the start of the arc um show us what the fey wilds has become yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, that grove is absolutely recorrupted by now. I was keeping track of it. Oh the yeah, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. All you guys got to do That's okay. is we'll go back and cleanse her again. Yeah. <sighs> we'll see. <laughs> maybe if you, uh, maybe if you guys just bring back Oberon, he can take care of it. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure he can just fix everything with the snap of his fingers. <laughs> we'll see. Orlin believes in him. He can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, like uh, the the plants encounter was a serious encounter because of like the threat that could like it's not combat. I mean, you guys turned it into combat when you started burning them all. But even then, like 
you guys kind of figured out that as long as you stay out of the range, you could just keep on bringing fire on. They couldn't do anything. <clears throat> but uh, it was the danger with that was not realizing what was going on. Like there was the potential not retrieving that, the souls. Yeah. And like, there's a potential that because Clayus was soul was gone for days and um, <laughs> every short or long rest, I would roll a D six and that's how many max HP he would lose. And as soon as I was like, at low max HP to start with, I was getting yeah, pretty low yeah. down there. So it was, I was like, in the forties, I think. Yeah. Was your, was it permanent or did you get that back when you got your soul back? I got it back when I got my soul back, but okay, good. Yeah. And he lost it all when he turned to dust. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, I have zero max HP now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, if if that if he distracted you guys long enough to get that down to zero, like he would have been dead right there. Um, and I think the big turning point was when, um, uh, yeah, that's fine, Tim. I understand. We'll be r- wrapping it up here soon. We can wrap it up like whenever you guys are ready. Um, the big turning point was when Serafina got turned to, um, uh, I think that's when you guys really realized what was going on. Um, or it's like sort of when you guys worked it out is right after Serafina got turned to, but, and talking to the plants and stuff. I thought um, it was funny that you thought that the thing Serafina had and the thing that I had were completely different things for like an entire session. Uh, <laughs> Me? Like what thing? What thing are you? No, talking? every everyone else, no, uh, everyone in the party was like. Oh yeah, yeah okay. Seraphina like, is possessed by the weird. plants, and Clay's soul yeah. is missing. <laughs> they, yeah. they were two separate things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. The the whole thing was the plants. They wanted their their plan was to keep you guys in the area for as long as possible, so that they could slowly get all of you, uh, or at least as many of you as possible, and then kill the rest. Um. And that was their thing. And then the fight with the Devourer in the Cartobas in the grass uh, could have been more epic. Uh, Melora's suggestion shouldn't have worked there, but it's fine. doesn't matter. Um, we know now. Um, but, yeah, as soon as you guys... I didn't like that you, Devourer. You didn't like the Devourer? <laughs> nope. No? Why? I think that's the first time Vash went down. So, oh yeah, with the was it the AOE? Did not like that devourer. Yeah, yeah, AOE is mean, dude. I think if I killed like... them, we would have had at least two <laughs> other people die to the plants. Oh yeah, yeah, and the, like, the, oh man, the funny thing is that, that you, so you've leveled up since then, I think once, but that devourer was only like a CR ten or something. Like he wasn't like super powerful and. I mean, you guys are probably like CR ten. That's we're only the, like the, level. The problem 11. was the no, anti magic yeah. field because Orlin put her only thing that she could use to keep range that wasn't magical in her bag of holding, and everything else on her was was no, magic. He's, and, he's talking about the creatures in the maze. Yeah, the, the, oh, the thing that had like, like the soul or the, the, the body in a cage of ribs. Yeah, that was the devourer, yeah. The oh, right, okay, okay. The holder was a different story. That was a CR yeah. 15 with the, with its layer actions, like a CR 15. With two uh, liars with it. I don't know what, what mind flyers are, but I know they're up there. Uh, the they devourer. were CR, like six or seven or something. They were a CR 8. Each of those guys. Eight. It, okay, so two eights and a fifteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the devourer wouldn't have been as scary if um, we weren't in the. Draft we could see and could yeah. see. Yeah. If we had vision, we couldn't. Yeah. Easy. Well, that Easy was fight. that was part of that was part of the uh, what made it difficult, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, but certainly, I th- I can't remember what the Cartobas were. What was the CR on the Cartoba guys? The two tentacle monsters. Probably like eight or nine. Sounds They're big right. plant monsters, something like that. Let's see. What did you call them? A Cartoba? Yeah, they're called Cartoba. See, I think it's K A R T O E B A. Um, definitely a homebrew. Mo- I have no idea what that is. It is. It is a homebrew monster, but CR seven. They're CR seven. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, so you had the Devourer is CR 10, two CR 7s, and the fight right after that is a CR 15, if you include the layer actions, because it was basically 
a death tyrant, not a regular beholder. Death tyrant. And two eights. And, yeah, and two eights, which is a significantly harder fight. Like just off of CR. But you guys also leveled up between those fights, I think. Yeah, it was easy. But still. Um and the uh the mind flares were mind flare arcanists. Uh I don't think I added anything special to them, if I recall. I almost added counterspell and decided against it at the last moment. Um, that would have made it harder. It yeah. made it a lot harder. Shield worked out great for them, though. Uh, I'd say. Um, <laughs> Especially against Orland. <laughs> <laughs> but the... Uh, the We're going the, down. The Beholder was essentially... <laughs> I, took the, I took the Beholder, and I was... Well, for, really what I did was I took a Death Tyrant, and I was like, let's let it keep the Beholder anti-magic beam. Um, and we'll give it some of the Death Tyrants had better saves on some things, like it had a strength save bonus that the regular Beholder didn't have, but I didn't make it an undead like a Death Tyrant. Instead, I let it stay as an aberration and keep its anti-magic cone instead of the uh, negative energy cone. Um, so it was like a mm. mix. It was like a mix between the two. Orleans learned not to keep her crossbow in her bag of holding. She's going to start strapping it to her back again like she used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well well this is cool this is cool uh i'm sure we'll think of other questions <laughs> and this time if you think of a question write it down and be like and save it for like next q a and we can go over it then yeah yeah mm -hmm. I had a ton of questions but i started thinking about it i'm not sure i actually want to ask any of them on on stream <laughs> Well, if, uh, if you've got questions that involve, like, secret things going on with your character, you may not want to ask. Yeah, that. yeah, that's, sure. that's the problem. <laughs> but, I don't know, like, I think we'll, we'll be answering a lot of questions here shortly. Oh, good. Um, sooner rather than later, I hope. But it'll most likely leave us with more questions. Um, I hope, if I do my job right. Uh, we will see. But... Thank you guys for being here for the Q&A players. Um, thanks, Keo and Ferdy, for being there, even though I had to take off Tim. Uh -huh. if you're still here. Oh, hey, one of them's here. I'm still here. Um, thanks for being here. Um, viewers, thanks for being here. People watching on YouTube, thanks for being here. Check out all the links in the descriptions. We've got links to artwork, like Vash's artwork, which is custom made. Uh, we've got a link to the artist's uh, page there. If you want to do commissions, they're open. We got links for like music that we use. Um, we've got links for all the things. Um, I think we might have added some new links recently, even. Let me check. Yes. And now we're going to be taking um, one of them down because I am no longer using the outfit that I was using before. I <laughs> fully custom made Orlin's outfit. <laughs> right on. So we will be removing. Yeah. The link for Orlin's outfit. Then I'll make a note of that, yeah. or at least changing um, what is there. Yeah. I guess I should find that so I can. It's all good. Uh, Info. It'll probably be a couple days before the uh, video goes up. If y'all let me know before then, that'd be fine. Um, yeah. And big thanks to Unrooted who has been monetarily supporting us. Uh, for a long time, um, uh, which is just awesome to have uh, yeah. have here. So big thank you. We really like today appreciate... was an expensive day. <laughs> yeah. We we really appreciate both uh, all that you've done monetarily, but also showing up almost every right. single session yeah. since yeah. we started. It's uh, it's super cool. Just, yeah, just to see the chat interaction going on um and vanny uh is another one who's been dropping some bits lately um and we've had a few like there's too many people to name them all there's been a bunch of people that have been raiding a channel and stuff um and i see people dropping in and out during streams and trying to catch up when they when they can and that's all really cool so really appreciate that also the youtube channel did hit a thousand subs uh with the last session um so yeah thank you guys for that too um and yeah, as we go forward, that's just going to help like everything. 
Um, next thing we need is just to get more watch hours. If we get those watch hours up to 4,000, the channel's going to be monetized, and it's going to be a whole new ball game at that point. Um, so that is the next big goal. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll do one of these. Let's say, uh, let's shoot for in a month. Uh, do another one of these Q&As. But uh, yeah, just big thank yous to everybody. And uh, yeah. you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Uh, thanks for interacting. Thanks for uh, all the stuffs. And uh, you guys have a great week. Okay? Me too. <laughs> all right. Good night. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night.